If you guys are looking for super cheap and reliable coins, look no further than my sponsor, MuttReserve.com. They're awesome to work with. They got 24-7 support. Guys, don't waste your money on packs. Hit up the sponsor. Use code Poodle at checkout for 15% off of your entire order. What's going on, everybody? It's Poodle back with another Madden Ultimate Team video, guys. And today, I'm going to be going over the top 10 most overrated cards in Madden 21 based on my opinion before you guys go crazy. Guys, now, I just want to give you guys the quick little factors I do put into play when I do this video because people don't always understand the factors, and that's going to change. I might put a great card on here, but based on price and based on where he sits in the game right now, he's overrated. Like, I factor in price. I factor in stats. It doesn't matter your overall. It's price relevant to your overall. So, yes, let's say potentially a 40K card that's an 82K, 82 overall player. I could be overrated. It's not a lot of coins, but in comparison, it is. But, guys, before we get into today's video... And we go starting off from number 10. Now, guys, these are in no specific order. I just rank them through 10 so I can count them easier. But no specific order. Some guys could be worse. Some guys could be better. But, guys, before we get into today's video, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. Can we get 100 likes in this video, guys? Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Turn on the notification bell to get notified every time I post a brand new video. I got some bangers coming today or had them ready. So, make sure the notification bell is on. And comment down below. Let me know who I'm missing from this list or who you think I shouldn't have put on this list. But, yeah, it's about it, guys. I did do another giveaway today on one of the on the coin videos. So make sure to go check that out for another chance at a gift card. The rules and regulations to that giveaway are in that video. So make sure to go check that out. But, guys, let's start getting to this video. Guys, coming in at number 10 is going to be Mike Evans. Now, Mike Evans is a guy that I always think is pretty overrated in Madden. He They, they don't really make his card proper. So, they give him the good height. Obviously, that's his, he was born with that. He's 6'5", great height. But what they do wrong with, first off, he's very expensive. 65K for an 85 overall. I mean, in terms of other cards, the price isn't too much of a factor here, but the issue with Mike Evans is they give him horrible route running and not the best speed. 84 is better than what they usually give him, but if you can't route run and you can't burn the top off the defense, you're not usable. And I'll give you guys a good example. Uh, why is Tyreek Hill so good? Because he can outrun anyone, so it doesn't matter what his stats are, he can outrun anyone. Why are cards who can't, out cards who can't, run, can't outrun anyone need to be good route runners? The last thing I want to do is have a receiver, like literally the only thing you can really use Mike Evans for. It's contested catching and basically you know guys know how mutt works the last thing i want to do is be focused all game on contested catching trust me it is not a recipe for success i can promise you that you do not want to be having to throw contested all game it is just horrible will he make plays yes is he a guy that you want to build your offense around i do not think so that is why he's on this list i don't think he's really that usable the next guy on this list is a guy that you guys might not be happy that i put him on this list but you guys will understand as we get into this more so why he's on this list and why i do believe that he's overrated that's george kittle in past years, George Kittle stood out. Always a well, he's a well-rounded player. He has always good to decent run blocking, good to decent catching, good to decent route running, and good speed. Now, guys, he's great. He's a great card. I'm not going to lie. He's a good card, but he's almost at 200K for a tight end. Right now, what do tight ends do? What do tight ends really do? Right now, every tight end in the game is good. Every tight end can, any, any tight end can be good, only need to speed, because right now, linebackers have no change of direction. Linebackers are slow. The user game is not good. Tight ends are eating in games right now. So all you really need is good speed, and his speed's only an 81. In years past, he usually was significantly faster than most tight ends besides like Engram. But this year, he's right in line with even guys like Zach Ertz. So like, why would you go a guy like Kittle unless you just want the run block for the fact for that price? So that's that's the issue here. Like he's great still, but you can get a guy in like the 45, 50k range who's going to be faster. You can get Jonu Smith team builder who's going to be faster and still be able to do a decent amount of stuff. You don't need that great catching right now. I think he's overrated for his price when he comes down of course i will be interested in picking him up but for the time being i really just don't i don't think i can justify picking up a george kittle this year until he gets either faster which it doesn't look like he's going to be much faster than the pack this year specifically next year on the list coming in at number eight is going to be deandre hopkins a guy that i think is always overrated to madden now in real life he's a, he's a monster he's a monster in real life but madden never makes him good he falls kind of in the mike evans territory he's definitely better than evans which is why i i hesitate to put him on this list but Hopkins is another guy with 84 speed. He really can't burn the top off the defense. In my opinion, 86 speed still struggles right now. I think if your receivers don't have at least an 87 speed, they're not going to be able to make separation deep. So right now, to be a good deep player, you got to have like a Tyler Lockett, a Tyree Kill, a uh, Mark Clayton. Those are the guys who burn things deep. Now, guys, I know you might say, well, I, I run a certain offense, whatever. I get it. Putting yourself at a disadvantage if you're rocking with an 84 speed receiver. Now, if you're on a theme team, that's different. But right now, he's not going to be able to make separation deep. He's not going to be great at running deep post. He's not going to be rated running deep uh, the deep flags or any of those or, or quick streaks. He's good at slants and stuff. But I'm not, I don't want to buy a receiver for slants. Anyone can run slants. And his route running is not even that high either. So he's going to be a better version of Mike Evans with less height. But I don't think he, I just don't think he's worth the price tag. You know that you're paying for him. That's kind of the point here. And the next guy coming in number seven is right there, Devontae Adams. They just fall every year. It's Devontae Adams, Mike Evans, and Hopkins fall into the same route, like the same combo of players. He's even worse. He has an 83 speed. 
But Devontae Adams is a great route runner in real life. Now, if they had given him a higher route run, like closest to 90, where you can get some thresholds, maybe. But right now, that 83 speed is not cutting it. He's slower than the running back. He's slower than wide receivers. Some tight ends are even faster than him. Devontae Adams is too slow to be on my team. 83 speed is not going to cut it. Like, defenses already have Isaiah Simmons, Tyron Matthew, uh, Devin Bush, and a bunch of other guys. Devontae Adams is going to be a liability on the field for me. Now, again, theme teams are different, but I don't think I want a guy who can only run short and medium routes that can catch. So, ins, outs, and catching. But I can just get a better receiver that can do all those things. But let's move on to the next one, guys, here. Now, the next one is going to be a little iffy when you look at the prices. The price is going to the price is going to be a little bit different in terms of how we look at it because of his card standing, which is going to be... It's going to be Rob Gronkowski, guys. Rob Gronkowski, LTD. Guys, I played with him. He was super fun. He was super good. But can you justify over half a million coins? No, you cannot. I know he's an LTD and he's going to stay there, but that is why he's overrated. Now, the only issue with Gronk is his speed again, guys. I played with him, and this is going to be the issue that I said in-game. When you get, when you find him open or find him with space or find him contested, he's going to make the catch. He's going to catch the ball. He's going to truck people over. He's going to run great routes. But the issue then occurs that his speed is just too low. So what happens when there's a good user on him? Gronk's done. Like, I promise you. I versed, I versed kids in that game who once they're like, oh, he's looking for Gronk. They use it against the user Gronk. That was it. It was over. Gronk couldn't get open. You can't run streaks with Gronk because he's too slow. So he can't take the top off. Like, he's not tight end that you can do like a a seam route like with like maybe kittle's too slow now too but like a wallard engram a Jonu smith like a seam where you cut the safeties too slow not gonna get enough separation the play is gonna be over by then um his catching's great in the red zone he's a great red zone monster but are you gonna buy over half a million card just for slants and stops in the in the end you know the red zone it's kind of tough to justify that but his routes were great i loved him he ran crisp routes he was just too slow so like if you run x drag trail or or over the middle tight end plays where they build up slowly and get across linebackers He's so slow, so like it takes some time to do that. Even when he does, people pick up on it. You're going to need more speed. You need more moving parts on the field moving fast. You know, if, if things are moving fast and the tight end's moving slow, they could worry about the fast pieces come back down. If the tight end's moving fast with the other pieces moving fast, people get nervous. They start to panic. Who should they use her? Gronk's good. He's, he played great for me. But again, there were some, some of those games where I was like, yeah, they're keen in on him. If they weren't keen on him, this would be a lot easier to really showcase him, which goes to show you part of your offense. He has to be another piece in your offense. And for that price point, I can't justify as another piece. Next on the list is 89 Jerry Rice, guys. I used him yesterday. Falls into that, falls into it. He's better in terms of other things. But for his price and the fact that he's going to be a legend, I don't think he's a long-term card at all. Jerry Rice has a name. I, yes, he's the GOAT. Like, I think he should definitely always have better cards, but they always kind of screw him on speed. Now, I played with him, guys. He dropped a lot of catches. He wasn't the best at contested catches. He is a crisp route runner. I'm not going to lie. He's a great route runner. He's great at ins. He's great at slants. He's good at outs. Like, if you just want a crisp route runner, he's fine. But again, for the price point in his overall, you're buying him. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like in fantasy when you pick a guy in the first round, you're picking him to be a top 10 player. Same thing. When you, when you buy a Jerry Rice wide receiver, you're picking him to be the best wide receiver in Madden or one of your best wide receivers on your team, I should say. And he can't. He could not carry my offense. Dan Marino was okay. But he wasn't great either. But Jerry Rice, I did good because I knew what to play with him. But for the most part, you're buying him to be a number one wide receiver, and he's not going to play like that. He can't pick the top off the defense, so you're going to have to match him up like a Tyree Kill or a Lockett. And then even then, when you're when you're in a pinch and you need a guy to make a crazy play for you, you really just can't streak him because he's going to have to do a contested. And contested catches in Madden deep do not work that well. I promise you, without cams, without abilities, without everything, even then they do not work that well. I like to throw people open, and with him, it's just going to be tough. And again, I'm not going to run slants all game. It's not how I play. Next on the list, guys. This guy over here, a perennial, like every year they screw his card up too. And they used to always have him so good. And that's Bobby Wagner, guys. Bobby Wagner is one of the most overrated players in Madden. 189K, and you're paying the premium for a 79 speed. He can lay the boom, but so can Devin Bush. He can play zone, but so can other guys. What you're really getting him for is his uh his fundamentals. Like he can recognize the play. He can fill a gap. He can block shit. He could hit. He's gonna stop the run game. He's a, he's a run stopper. That's what he is right here. He's a run stopper that can also play the field. So that's why his title is a field general. But that speed, he's too slow. They, they run stretch. The run, Barry Sanders worked on running right around. Like if they, he feels a gap, they're running around him. He's the kind of guy that's so slow that if you get up to him, you can just kind of run uh, horizontal to the field and run across and then go around him. You can juke him out pretty easily. And not to mention, if he fills a gap, you can run around him there too. Stretches. And you can't use him. He's completely not userable because of his speed and change of direction. Just isn't all the way where it should be with the 70 guys. He's going to feel like a slug if you try to use him. So he has to be left alone. I'm just not a fan. Unless you want a pure 200k run stuff. That's like playing defensive tackle at middle linebacker. Not, not my cup of tea in terms of that. Next guy is the guy that I hate to put on here. I hate to put him on here. Christian McCaffrey for 170k. Hate to do it. I'm, I think the next McCaffrey card is going to be super great. But again... 
when you have guys like Warwick Dunn and Barry Sanders in the game, Warwick Dunn does not cost too much more than Christian McCaffrey. I think it's like another 60k maybe. He's going to be another. Oh, right now he's 300k. That's not his usual price. Usually Warwick Dunn's like 220, 240, but he's up right now. But Christian McCaffrey has an 85 speed. He's not the fastest. Like he's gonna feel fine. He's gonna be a great juke and everything. But you're paying a premium. You're paying him to be. When you buy a running back for that price right now, you're paying him to be a guy who can make massive plays, burn the field. And now with right now what we got, we got Isaiah Simmons, Tyron Matthew, we got Devin Bush now. We got so many fast guys in the field that Christian McCaffrey is not going to be like, his speed's not enough to every time he breaks around. Like, you know, when you get past that first linebacker, and you're like, all right, I'm one-on-one -on -one the safety. I'm taking this, I'm taking this all the way. Or you burn a line uh, safety. He's going to be able to be caught up to. He's not fast enough. Now he's going to be a crazy good juker. Powered up, he's great. He's going to be a great player, but not for the price. I think for the price, you're either better off going like a Saquon or a Dalvin for, you can go Saquon Dalvin for like 30, 40, 50 K and pay one, one fourth of what he's worth here, one third, and be able to get similar production versus this price. Now, again, it would be a different story if you had like an 86, 87 speed, but when you have the same speed as like Saquon and Dalvin, one plus, very comparable, Derek Henry. Um, yeah, I, I would stick with work done or go with one of the budget guys. Then for the final two guys on this list, you guys know I always put him on this list, and that's Michael Thomas, guys. Michael Thomas, again, guys, there's just they screw receivers, Madden. They really do. Hopkins, Evans, uh, Devontae Adams, Michael Thomas, 83 speed. How can you guys justify 130k, 134k for an 83 speed wide receiver? If you play Michael Thomas, you can't shrink the ball. Not gonna work. He's gonna, he's gonna not gonna be able to burn anyone. You can't do deep post. He's not gonna get that extra, the extra gear at the end to run past the safeties and split them. You can only run slants and you can run medium routes like ins, outs, but even then a good user can pick up with him fast. Like usually in, if you let it go across, he'll burn past your linebacker. He's not that fast. I really don't think Michael Thomas is that great and the price is too much. And then for the final guy on the list, coming in at number one, again, not in any specific order, but going to be at number one. This guy here, I played with him yesterday. I thought he was good, but not for the price. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I have some, I have some issues with this guy and that's Dan Marino coming in number one, 240K, kind of like Elway last year. Guys, first off, he's not mobile at all. No speed. I promise you, that's horrible. I mean, I know some of you guys like that. I'm not a fan of Hot Rod Master. But the way the game is right now, I'm doing pretty fine just rocking with uh, my regular routes. I haven't really felt the need to be super sweaty and stuff just yet, so I don't really think that's the biggest plus right now. Second, his accuracy. If you don't power him up and chem him up all the way, which is super hard right now and super expensive, his accuracy is falls in the 80 thresholds. Like, he's nothing special there either. His throw power is good. But you can get him a Mahomes for about half the price. And get the same production and he's gonna be mobile you can get a mobile version of him for half the price not to mention everyone has a free lamar so again it's kind of dumb to even buy another quarterback and he was missing some throws he missed some throws to me overthrew some people because his accuracy is only in the 80s to give him that damn Marino feel you have to get 90s which is why i think they kind of killed the card by not giving him base 90s or at least 89 so that when you do power him up you get everything he's gonna fall just short of all of his accuracy unless you have chems which a lot of people don't even have chems on all their players yet or want to waste that training yet but guys about it for the video hope you guys did enjoy if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, turn the notify bell, boys, come join the family, give this video a big thumbs up as always, and if you haven't already, comment down below who you think I should have added to this list or missed on this list, but guys, that's about it for the video, enjoy the rest of your day, I'm out, peace.